hello and angel and this is the data science learning community we are explaining today the shiny models chapter 19 on mastering shiny so we we'll start with understanding that functions are really good if all your code are in the server or are in the client side but what happens when you want to repeat code that is in both places. And the answer is to use models. That's the way that you can uh, avoid repeating that those code when you when you need to, to place code in both parts. We can think about models that is a way to maybe simplify all the parts in your Shiny app. Uh, this is this shiny app is about have many parts that are connected to each other, but all of them are independent. But that's not maybe the reality in the business world. If we apply models, we can uh, group these these different uh, fu functions in in just a group. What are the benefits of models? The models are kind of miniature apps with a larger, uh, within a larger app. So it's like you are creating a minimal expression of, of a shiny app. And it can be, uh, it can be isolated of inputs and outputs. It's like you are creating a black box with a UI and a server part. So it's like you are creating a component that have some UI and some server part, just as, as a function. It will help you to avoid namespace collisions, so you know that every part of your shiny ID is a unique ID. When you need, for example, to have many selectors, just start writing selector one, selector two, selector three, but when you write a model for that selector, you just you don't need to to make that process to remember. Oh, we are matching this selector one with the server of selector one. No, models you will create just one model, and you won't need to repeat that process. Allow you encapsulate this team at components, uh, facilitate collaboration because. If you are creating a, a huge shiny app, you can ask someone, hey, you can create this model and someone else can, you can create another one and you can work in parallel in that way. So models work as function in shiny, helps to break your, your big complex app into a smaller parts, make shiny code more readable, make shiny code easier to debug, make shiny components reusable, opens the possibility to apply unit tests also. And here is after applying the component. So now you don't need to understand every part, you know that, oh, in this part, we get the data. Then here we apply some validations and here we apply all that we need to get the result, for example. Now, let's pick just a simple example. We have here uh, a simple shiny app. And here we have uh, input select. So we have the columns of the empty, empty cards. And then we can select the number of bins and display a histogram. That's basically the app. How we do it in the server part? Well, we create, we extract the column that uh, we want to, that we selected here. Then we have input bar. We get that column and we use that column to create the histogram with the bins and the name of the bar. And that's it, that's the app that we are creating. But let's try to break this in a function because maybe you want to create several histograms and you don't want you to repeat that code. Create a function with the ID argument. That's the, the they are the basic step to create the UI function part. You get, oh, function ID. 
That's the first step. Then grab all the components into a tab list uh, to bundle together multiple components without actually applying uh, any layout, uh, any layout uh, particular. And then you, you will need to grab all your IDs in the next space ID. That what we make sure that all your IDs will be unique across. It doesn't matter how many times you repeat that function. And also, you don't need always to repeat the in this way. That's the way that the book recommends. But after some dates, shiny changes, and now you can just create this one function and just part the the names. We are adding the ID, you know, ID component. That's the more popular way to, to do it right now. And now let's talk about the server part. You will start creating a function with the ID. Then you call the shiny model server, as you see here, and then you start creating your server function as normal. So you just need to take in consideration this, this snip. And as you see here, there is no changes here. You see input bar, the beans, so any any changes in this. This is the, the easiest part, maybe. Now we can combine all of these in just one function. So we can uh, grab the histogram UI into the fluid page and also call the server uh, into the server function of the main app. If you see the most interesting part here in the server part is that you are you don't need to point the output again. It's like you point the output here in this part, and just by placing the function, Shiny assigns the output. And then we can run it. I'm trying to, to use a Shiny Live just because to be able to see the functions we are need to to go out from the presentation. And maybe 150, yeah, and that's it. It works as normal. If you see the did, you will see that, that he has the, the modules, the app, and how it works from. Now, let's check the model isolation. The output, uh, out will never get updated because there is no beans. It's like they are explaining that uh, if you update this part, but the the beans uh, is used inside the server. So you it was it, it, the beans part was created here as part of the UI, I think. And you are trying to get it, but it's inside this model. And you cannot uh, get it, uh, access to that information. You see, you are using the same ID in both parts. So it knows that, hey, this UI is related to this server part. Some conventions that we use for for models, we try to place all our code uh, in the R folder. That's useful, uh, especially you are using Golem for creating your apps because it's the folder that also use the packages to load all the functions. So all your code will live in that for in that folder. Uh, you try always to use the suffix UI 
the difference in between the the output, you know, the in the server. Uh, also, you can use the uh, input and output. Sometimes you have a uh, models that the, the the main part is just to to get the input, and the other part is to show the outputs. In the in the in the prior example that we saw here, uh, we didn't use that because the 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 ser the we didn't split that part. It's like if you were for example, selecting the bars in one part and later uh, showing the output, then you will make the split. But uh, it would depend. And also you can use the Sufi server to identify, oh, this is the UI part, this is the server, or this is the input, and this is the server. And also Instagram app, is the Sufi that we use to create uh, the app for interactive experimentation and more formatted. It's like, okay, you create a model, you don't need to wait to create the whole app, to integrate the whole app to test if your model is working. You are supposed to run this before integrating your code in the, in the rest of the app. So now you are testing your code, or at least running your code uh, by order. And no just uh, and no not too much complicated. So the first exercise in the first group or exercise that we have two groups is why is good to practice why is a good practice to put a model in its own file R that uh, in the R folder? And what do you need to to do to make sure it's loaded? Uh, by your shiny app. So the first part is important uh, for the package part. And also it's important that you have in separate files so people can work independent. If you, if you are working with many people, you don't want to edit the same file at the same time. So you try to put every model in a single file into the R folder. And so far, we are not working as a package. You will need to source every function. Maybe you can use this function. So it was part of the, it was in the examples of the source function. As So it will, it will allow you to take a path of, of your R folder and load all your function because you will need to do a by by one. That, that's the point of this function. So you, you they are running a for loop for every file in the file list. So what it's doing, oh, you have a, every R, R, S, Q, many uh, files that I, we can use, work with source and tries to give you some, some input of what it's doing. But uh, also, uh, 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 making sure that your options remain the same. Uh, maybe because, yeah, you source an RSD, RSQ, I think it's a binary file. And that's it. Uh, just a comment. Mm -hmm. I think it means there, you can go back. It means that all the files that uh, finish in dot, dot .r, that have an extension .r, uh, you know, no matter the case, .s or .q, uh, that's going to be included, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, because that's dollar sign is a regex. So that means yeah. that if it finishes in this pattern, then, you know, it will get, uh, you know, it will get moved. Yeah, you are, you are right. It's just one shot at there. Correct. I was assuming that it was there are many, but we should have a plus here to make right. that possible. Right, but it, it's just you know if it's one of those characters, you know, upper lowercase r, upper lowercase s, upper lowercase q, then it yeah. will it will source uh, it. It, it mm -hmm. will source it. Correct. Yep. Example two: the following model UI includes a critical mistake. Why? What, what is? 
what what is it and why will we cause problems and the problem is that we have no namespacing you know every id so, yep the, the the ns right exactly mm -hmm. yep yep they need to apply that that, okay. that that was a problem the following model generates a new random number every time you click go um yeah uh, yeah that was the, the explanation so that's the purpose so you have input test you click go we will add some sample from one to ten so from 100 create an app that display four copies of the model on a single page verify that each model is independent to make independent the model you just need to create one id per model and now you can see the goal and we press over you can see that yeah they are already independent and that's the magic of models. You just needed to write the model once and you can use it four times. We have any problem with the output, you know, because the output was already here. And uh, yeah, output bar. And we see it already. Uh, how would you change the return value of the return UI random UI to make the display more attractive? Uh, placing go uh, bottom before the return values. So I, I I want to place go and then show the value, you no know, the other way around, and use value bots from the BSLib package. To, to use booster file. Also change the layout if, uh, in order to be a grip like we use in ggplot2, but a grab. So now I just need to place every model. And now we, we are not making any change to the server part. Yeah, now we have go. It looks more nice. <laughs> the same functionality. Now, let's talk about inputs and outputs. Adding arguments to the model UI gives greater control over model appearance. Connecting models together requires you to be explicit about inputs and outputs for the model server part. Uh, much easier to understand, allow you to build substantially more complex apps. Basically, what it gives you is like, hey, we can use the UI function as functions. Like, hey, maybe you want to add an argument that changes some color while applying different values to the filter. So you can make your parts more, more general by adding argument to the, to the functions. Let's see the, this other example, select data. Allows the user to select a data set after confirming that, confirming if the data is a data frame. So, we can, with the, that case, we use filter is data frame or a matrix. So this will, this will be the input part. We just call this part. And basically, we are just adding the, the select input. But we are picking a data frames and matrix from the package data sets. 
if we are not applying any filter, so it's noon, we just jump and pull all the the names here as a to select. But in other case, we get the, the type of data now each, each case, and then we fill we apply the, the filter function for every of the objects to valid is to validate to confirm is a data frame or is a method just to to keep all of them of the methods or all the data frames and the server part we just need to apply the the get function to the same package and return a reactive value you see here we are no we are not assigning any output yet we are just returning a reactive value that's another alternative for the server for the server functions uh, we could return reactive you cannot return any other value that is not reactive so you have two options or you assign an output or you return an app uh, a reactive or even a list of reactive. So you have, hey, I want to return more than one value. You can place all your reactive values inside a list. We will see it later, but that, that's the case. Now we just need to, to place the data set ample filter. So in the app, you see for the app function, I'm placing also a filter here to say, hey, you can filter from the app. So it's easier, you know, I don't need to manipulate every time. And now when you call your, your data set server, you can assign to data, then you can transform your data and finally assign the output. That's really, in this case, it's not really useful. You could maybe do, the same thing, you know, in the, in the same model, but they just want to show you that you can take out data. And this is an input type because you are not, you know, you are not changing the output of the shiny app. It just gets as a value after the model. So you are just impute. Uh, the purpose of this model is to impute. And now we can see the head of each part. So it's working properly. It's taking the data out of the model and bringing it to the general server function and then it's returning the output. Create a counter that allows the user to select variables or specific a specified type from given reactive data set. Uh, but basically, the function just taking the variables, but it's really general, you know, like it's no, it doesn't have any choices yet. Uh, I think I'm just explaining here the same. Uh, starting the numeric server part. Oh, got it. This is another app. So here we just have choices and it's noon because we are going to assign them in the server part. That's the point. Then we create a filter that basically we're going to go to a data frame and check what type of column we are extracting. And now we, we are, and here is the server function. That is the one that is have all the work. So every time your data is changing, so every time you select a new data frame, it will go and filter all numeric, that's the default, all numeric columns, and we update the selector. So you will be able to select that and then return that value.
and here we see the return value, and now you can render P and apply output. That's, that's what they are doing. The same here, you, the purpose of this model is input. So you are imputing your data set, so you are getting all your data. Then you are selecting a numeric value for that data frame. You see that you have the argument data, the argument filters, that's the one that making the, uh, the job. And then you are returning the output based on that column. What they want to show you is hey, you can add arguments here in your in your UI functions. You can add data. You see, this is a reactive value. And you don't need to you don't need to add parentheses here. That's maybe to me one of the trickiest part. When you are passing information between models, you don't need to to call it as a reactive value. You just place them. <laughs> because it's like a uh, shiny will be able to, to track them ac across the server function. Now you can see it. You can see how it is working. But let me go back. And even though you are passing here with no parentheses, when I was using inside of the server, you need to use the parentheses to, to say, hey, this is a reactive value and it's changing. And here also. So when you are passing data to a model, in the general server function, you don't you don't call it as a reactive, you know? But inside of the the, the other server, you, you will call it as a reactive. And yeah, it's, it's a little bit hard to explain sometimes because it's not like linear. <laughs> you need to write things and then in the server you see all together. An important tip that they gave is that it's important to validate if some input is reactive. Check that each input to your model is either a reactive or a constant. Makes the life of model user more easier, avoids common problems when matching models with other input controls. Sometimes the solution can be wrapping the value in the reactive. Yeah, they explain that. Hey, maybe you want you would need to apply this sometime. And here we have, for example, in the prior function that we create for the server part, we know that data is reactive. So we made the validation here. And we know that it's numeric, it's a function, so it's not reactive. Um, or is the same. The validate the input of each argument. Debugging a shiny app is a little harder than debugging a regular code. So yeah, you you might need to to also uh, add more uh, more validation like a hey, data is a data frame uh, and filter is a function so you have more country if something goes wrong what was happening like what was you expecting so we need to be careful basically now we go to the our third app models consolidation we could combine data set and server bar in, 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 in a single model. Like, oh, I have this general function that I found the UI and this other one. And you can create with both just one a UI function. So you can nest model 
that based on other models. And you just need to create a related server function. Oh, you will take the data and you will pass the data here and you will create the bar and you now you will return the bar and that's it. So now you have all together, you have your data and you have your column. And you just, you don't need to, to worry about the two separate models. And now you just need to call a both. So you have the, the select data bar and the select in the server part. So you will just need to render. So it's the same app, but shorter. Oh, yeah, it changed a little bit the layout, but it's the same. Because we grab it inside a sidebar panel, a main panel, inside the sidebar layout. Give me a moment and I will come back. Okay, I'm back. Model challenge. Model function must be flexible enough to be used in multiple places. Simple enough that they that they can easily be understood. Expect that you have to do it wrong quite a few times before you get it right. In the production, in the engineering production, Chinese apps, they say that don't, don't worry too much about reusing models. You just create them and you don't maybe need to reuse them. And then after you have maybe your app more advanced and maybe you decide already that, hey, that's where we are going. Maybe you, you start refactoring your app. But as they say, it's, it's hard to make, to have it wrong, to have it right first time. So um, you just try to break your code and that, that's it. That's the, the main advantage, even though you cannot reuse it in many places. And by histogram, another app, for example, we can create a model that defines the number of beans and display a histogram. So it's like in the project sample, we just was display, we were displaying uh, the output of the, the the numeric the numeric outputs uh, for columns. But now we want to create uh, some shiny app that also return the output. So basically, what we are doing, hey, we want to add a selector to 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 get the number of beans for the histogram and also to place the histogram somewhere. Now in the server part, we just need to, to render the plot because we already have the number. So we have here uh, the function session. Yeah, this is from this part. So S is reactive, it's the bar, is the numeric value that we were returning in the prior shiny app. 
and the title is also reactive because yeah we are we are wrapping histogram into the reactive bar that's you are defining the function in this way because you are expecting you are defining this default but you are expecting to get uh, the the word from another model that that's the point it's like ah right, you are not getting you have the word histogram but if you are getting some title from another model you, you will be able to do it because it's already a reactive value now you are confirming that the edge is numeric otherwise you don't want to continue with the app because it will, if we get you an error now that you confirm that you have s and is numeric now you can place the main oh we have this number of beans with the title you see calling as a reactive and now you call histogram here are the numbers you already have the main title here and the number of beans now you just need to interrupt this uh, this component so in the main you just add the histogram output and here we are just following the same process data ads and just histogram It's great, it's working, but okay, I don't want to have this selector here in this place. I would like to have it here, even though it's part of the same model, and we can do it. So now we can split the UI. I will give you, it will give the separate elements you have depending on the same server mode. So now, rather than creating just one uh, UI function, you will create two. You will have the input and the output part. So the beans, and you just you will need you you just need to place histogram in every part. You're like okay, I have histogram here in the as part of the sidebar panel. We have also hist here as part of the output. So, and we, we don't need to do anything to the server function. And now we have the, the app just as we need it. Because we have all the selectors in one place and and the output here but you know that the beans is part of this mode so that's a, a really a huge advantage so to to always remember you can have more than one ui function And yeah, that's the tip for the, you want to show more than one output. Here is like, oh, I have the, the bar name and I'm changing as a reactive, or go, of course. And also we can take the, the values. That's for the name of the Instagram. Now you have the same uh, UI, but here now you can place the value in the name. That is the, the title part of the histogram server function. Uh, from the say a lot package, you can also uh, assign the two reactive into two different bars. So you 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 don't like to use this syntax of the 
for the dollar sign. I prefer to do it rather than adding a dependency, but it's part of the book. Basically, the only change here is that rather than just showing histogram, you you will have the name of the bar, or oh, it's the mom, and because we are passing the information as a reactive value. Now we have the second part of exercises. And we got the select bar server, so that both data and future are reactive. Then you said with an app function that lets the user pick the data with the data set module and filter the function you should input select, give the user the ability to filter numeric, charter, or further variables. And that's the, the major change. So we have this start changing the server, the server function. And now the changes are here. Now the input needs to be reactive. Oh, um, mm -hmm. uh, maybe what I need to do is make it smaller, exactly. Now we need that the filters needs to be a reactive value. Even though it's a function, yeah, you wrap it up in reactive. Now the filter, now if it is reactive, so we, we remove the exclamation mark from here. We change the observe because we used to have observe event here based on data. We want to data the selector every time data of filters uh, is changing. We need to have the filter before uh, finding bars. So it's like, you will, you will data, but please wait until we have the filter, please. <laughs> and now we just re, uh, return the same bar name and the data. Mm -hmm. Is that what the server part? And why change here in the numeric? Okay, we need to add choices because maybe you want a numeric, a character, or a factor. This part is really optional, but basically what I did here is I don't want to list all the columns if they, if they don't exist in the data. So if, the day, if I go over every column and check the data and configure, hey, it's numeric return numeric. Is a character or a factor and just pick the unique ones. To date the, the options. And what we really need to do is to return that uh, the function as a uh, as a reactive. If it's numeric, return the is numeric function, is character, is factor. And now watching all together in the in the general server function, you pass the data. Now you receive the data. You will uh, you will strap your filter function, it's a reactive value, and then you will pass that to the select set data and just plot the function. That, and that's that's the point. To 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 add more more alternative. So we can see most of the time it's all numeric. I think the only one I remember that it have some character is the iris. 
because I have some factor that is the, the, the value that we always want to predict. It doesn't show any, any output because factor is not numeric. <laughs> and we we put some rep that boy choosing any error here. Or in that case, we need another plot. Yeah, that would be to add more more code to the <laughs> right. To add, yeah. Yeah, that because we need to add usually code. for for factors which are uh, categorical, uh, you could use a bar plot. Correct. Yeah. We need to add a bad plot instead of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't. I didn't. Okay. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now we have the next exercise. Coming, coming soon. Coming soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Or maybe in the, in the next call or something with AI yeah, with other. And the following code defines output and several components of a module that takes a numeric input and produce a bullet list of some or three summary statistics that are the, the mean, the max, and the number of missing. Create an app that allows you to experiment with that. With the add function show, should take a data frame as input and use numeric bar select input to pick the variable and that summarize. So that's the code that they gave us. So we have the, the output, that is a list, and there is an element, and also we have the function that is a hey, wait for the bar, return a range, and render each of the values and assign it to the output. The, the, the output that we are showing here. And you see. And here is the, the numeric function, no, the, the general app. So we have the input, select numeric, I don't know, remember when I should. <laughs> what did I change here? Maybe, okay, the point was creating the app function. Okay, that, that, that was a point. So we have the data set, numeric input, a summary output. That, that is the one that we are placing here. And we just need to get the data, pass the data, and select the bar, and pass the value of the bar here. Yeah, I, I, I default to air, air quality because air quality have missing values. Most of them doesn't have any missing values. So let, let's check this code because like just to ask for the I didn't show all, so we are getting the data. Select input, so the, the, the point is that we are not making any changes here. And the code that they gave us in the exercise. So we just need to, to pass everything here. And where I um, I'm wondering where I placed that yeah, here in selected. That's the argument that I and that I did in the select input to default to air quality. Exercise three, the following model input provides the a test control that lets you type the day in this format, complete the model by providing a server function that use 
the input output error to display the mesa a message if the enter value is not a valid day. The module should return a day object for valid for valid date. And they say, hey, use the function to to, to know that it's using you are getting the correct value or no. It will return a name if the value isn't a valid day. So we start with the UI function. We add in the namespace. Then we are complete the label. The label is part of the an argument. And we are returning a flow a flow row. Uh, user inputs the date. So we are uh, we have the label here that is dynamic and uh, people will get the the date uh, by writing. The test input is a, a short answer. Then I added this confirm bottom. They, they didn't ask for that, but I was writing and I was getting errors before finishing typing, so I didn't want too much activity. And then uh, you will you will place the 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 error. If no, you will place nothing basically. And he has the server function. So I, I I start getting the input, uh, transforming as a date. Confirming is a name. Is a name I apply return to the result. Otherwise, it keeps the date. This is for the the button to work. So I don't apply any of this unless you you click over check. This is like a outside event, but also React event. This is like a new function. It's not in the book, but you can use it. You can bind it even for render functions, as you see here also, or reactive functions. And yeah, it's another new way to to do it. And also you get the error. If you, if there is no error, basically. Is the, the result that is here is no null, so it was no name. You return null as an output because there is no error to show. It's like show nothing. <laughs> uh, otherwise, you you would take the date. So the value, maybe it's not a date, um, and place uh, and place this A. There is no, I don't say missing. It doesn't match the pattern. And that's it. So let's, ah, of course, we need to also create the app. And yeah, basically, we are returning the value, but that value doesn't go to any, anywhere. So, for example, I write my name, Angel. Yeah, we have the error. And it doesn't update as I'm writing that. That's the point. And now if I write someday. The, the error disappears. And let me show you also what happens if, for example, I remove the reality, I think, from here. This is the error, the, the error won't show. Yeah, let's show you a little bit of this. So let me update again the app. And now, even though I'm not pointing the the bottom. 
the error gets updated. If I only erase this order, the, the behavior is also really interesting. So it's like, I run a ground, I confirm, and the value doesn't update, even though it's calculating in the background, you know? It's confirming the background, but it's not, it's not showing to the user. So, as we don't want to, to work every time, we remove in both places. So there's no need for the bottom. You don't know, even empty. And as you start writing, and, and the show will keep until you write a valid day. So to me, it was too much reactive. And that's it, that's the end of the chapter. And yeah, of course we have more, uh, more examples where we are not we are able to, to, to see it. They are to me really advanced. Uh, the, the limit, limit selection other is like hey if you want to create this other part that is not default so it creates i think one reactive one server yeah it, it creates just a shiny model and just for that and maybe the one of the trickiest part to me was that in the ration bottom in the choices name is passing a, already a HTML here because it's the other e, the the test it, it plays the test input as a other and also combine all together in a list so you have ba uh, charted values with HTML here and that's the way that he created um, we, he is also using choices, so adding labels. So even though he is an example here with the read functions, uh, he later changes. With making any change in the UI, just changing the the choices, the values to display to to match with the equation for the gender. And the wizard, the wizard, I was trying to read it, but I didn't get it really. And that's it, unless you have any questions, Ricardo. No, no, that, 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 that was great. And, you know, you explained it less than an hour. <laughs> yeah, no, it was... I know, I, know, I know it took a lot of uh, effort, you know, <laughs> to, no, make yeah. it, to make it compress, you know. Okay, <laughs> let's see how we can pack this. In an hour. <laughs> yeah, yes. But I, 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 at least it will give you the, the basic gui guidelines right. and all the tips to start over. And, and maybe one of the most important tips of this book is uh, don't get crazy about models. Just break your code and let's see how, mm -hmm. it, how it works. Right. Because uh, thinking about models as a repetitive way is hard. You know, unless... And don't expect to have always repetitive parts to break your code because mm. Chinese get messy really fast. <laughs> right. Yeah, uh, as always, it's a matter of practice and, you know, trying to, try, try, trying to imitate, you know, this kind of framework. Yeah. Well, all, all, the, product, all the production frameworks I know, so even though it's Rhino, it's Golem, or are mm -hmm. based on models. Right. And, um, in, in of course you need to type a little bit more with models sometimes if you are creating just an histogram or something really simple but they say you are making this for work uh -huh. created with models because even though they say hey 
I just want to a simple app, you know, a proof of concept. Then they say, hey, it's a really good app. Could you add this other thing and this other thing right. after three additions? Uh, any your Chinese app is not any more uh, a simple one. Correct. Uh -huh. Yep. So like, hey, it doesn't matter or where I start with models. Uh -huh. <laughs> yep. Yep. And that that's that that's a concept. So I think we are in the end. Uh, see you next week, Ricardo. Okay. Sure. Bye. -bye. We'll continue the discussion.